Welcome to the Future in Tech podcast and Future in Tech TV. I'm your host, Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst and Founding Partner at Futurum Research. Excited about today's podcast, going to be joined by Lattice Semiconductor Executive Vice President Issam Alesh Moui. And we're going to be talking a little bit about Lattice, its business, and its recent investor day because the company put out a super interesting uh, presentation, really enjoyed participating in it, and in fact, wrote about it in a recent Market Watch piece where I named Lattice as one of the four semiconductor companies that people should be paying attention to if they are not already. But before I start telling all my stories and singing all my praise and providing all my analysis on the company, let me just have uh, Isam go ahead and say hello and introduce himself. Isam, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Great to be here, Daniel. Really appreciate it. I watch your podcast, really interesting stuff. Finally, I get invited, so I'm really happy. And yeah. You yeah. I put a board behind me because I see your board behind you all the time. I figured I needed some uh, clip art behind me as well. I actually think your board is better than my board. Mine's a mine's a uh, mine, mine's a monitor, and uh, my camera did not like that I moved that fast. By the way, um, mine's a monitor, and it does all kinds of weird things with light. Like yours is perfect; it looks great, and you got that perfect brand strip right over your head. I need you to make one of those for me for next time I go on CNBC. But I need to say future and research. So send that over. Will do. Wait. And by the way, the flowers you sent guaranteed your spot on the show. So thank you so much for thank sending you. those. Uh, we've been enjoying those for the past few weeks. All seriousness, though, really been interesting spending some time together, uh, you know, working in advising Lattice, uh, learning more about the company, spending some time at your investor day. And I have a lot of interesting questions. I want to run through some of the things you talked about. But, but first and foremost, Lattice is growing really quickly, doing some really good things in the space, works with a lot of brands that everybody out there listening to the show knows and loves, but not everybody knows Lattice. So give a quick one minute elevator pitch just on Lattice because that way it'll help kind of shape the rest of this conversation. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, Lattice has been around for 38 years. We're a semiconductor company that's been around for a really, really long time. Not many people can, can claim that, but we are the innovators and we specialize in building very small power efficient FPGAs. And FPGA stands for Field Programmable Data Arrays. And in the old days, people used to build custom ASICs. They still do. But what you can do with an FPGA is you buy a standard uh, off-the-shelf product. It's called an FPGA. We've got a variety of different sizes. We specialize in the small, low-power, power-efficient ones. And then you, with our software tool, can actually download your ASIC design in there. So it almost becomes an ASIC that you can turn around in hours and program it within milliseconds. And so uh, it's very unique. It's uh, used across all end markets in critical infrastructure. So if you look at, for example, communication systems, you know, we are in 4G, we're in 5G wireless, both uh, wireline and wireless uh, in, well, communications infrastructure. Uh, we talked at our last investor day how we've been increasing our content in servers in a data center. And we went from what used to be about roughly three generations ago, 25% attach rate. So we talked about we're now above one attach rate in servers. So think about every data center enterprise that has a server, you're gonna find lattice devices there. We're using industrial equipment. Uh, you think about robotics, uh, motor control, uh, embedded vision, AI applications. Uh, we're using automotive industry, and, uh, quite a bit of vehicles. We're in consumer goods. So you, you know, most of your uh, audience may not realize it. They're probably using something or leveraging something that's going through Lattice devices today. Yeah, it could be your computer. It could be your server that's running your cloud applications. It could be your vehicle. It could be the machine in your factory. It, it, it was really interesting, like I said, because I'll be, I'll be first to say, even as an industry insider, I did not realize how pervasive your products were. And, and you know, because FPGAs are kind of in this interesting inflection point where some people kind of had said, no, you know, it's going to be the, the ASIC is the future. And you guys, especially in the areas you're competing, which I would say is at that very low power, low cost entry. And now and we'll talk more about where you're moving, but you've really kind of focused and said there is a very specific set of places in the market for FPGAs where they make the most sense, best dollar value, best for power. Um, and you guys are proving that and your your growth seems to be, uh, you know, aligning and very well with yeah. that sentiment. Um, so, so let's start out, you know, uh, Jim Anderson, your CEO kicked off, you were part of the investor day, saw you sitting up there on stage, hopefully in the future, you'll be able to do this live, uh, it, you know, with all your 
investor relations folks there. I'll be sure to be there. But I have to say, one thing that caught my attention straight away, Jim flashed a slide and it was next sit at the top. It said executing our strategy, but it said what we said in May 2019 and then said what we did. And what was most impressive about the slide is it had about 10 bullet points on it um, that talked about product leadership and shareholder value. And it had green check marks next to everything. And wow, I mean, what a crazy premise, but talking to your shareholders, your community, your investor uh, relations folks, your analysts, and, and doing what you said. I mean, what a great way to start. Yeah, it is. And actually, you, you know, you're so into execution and the fact that we're all working really hard. You know, it's opportunities like that where you can sit back, reflect on everything that we've accomplished and realize, wow, we really did accomplish quite a bit over the last couple of years. And it started with the faster product cadence. You know, we are a product company. We're a technology company. And having the right product roadmap and portfolio is key. And what we've done is we've tripled the new product introductions. And that was one of the things that we set out to do in the very beginning. You know, uh, our, our market leading products, very differentiated. We had our Nexus platform that we launched late in 2019. Uh, we said, here are the dates of which we're going to launch these products. And we talked about, you know, additional products that will come out of the platform. We met all of those dates. We also talked early in, in 2019 about how important it is to invest in software and solution stacks to make it easier for our customers to implement their designs, make it more stickier, help them get to revenue much faster. We did what we said we were going to go do there as well. And so the execution fidelity, the beat rate, all of that has just been, uh, it's, it's just been, the team's done an, a fabulous job with, within the company. And the kudos goes to engineering, operations, finance, everyone's done a really good job, sales, marketing. And on the financial side of that, also, we set out with some goals and metrics in 2019. And we talked about that, you know, in the 21, 22 time period, we're going to get to double digit growth. And on the earlier part of that, if you look at our Q1 results year over year, it was 20% growth. And if you look at the midpoint of our guide for Q2, it was 19%. So we're on track for that uh, double digit growth that we had talked about. And then we set a target on gross margins. Uh, when I started in, you know, in 2018, the company had 57% gross margins. And we closed our last quarter at 61.7%, and our target was 62%. So we're on track for that. And the midpoint of our guidance for, for Q2 was 62%. So we've, uh, we've achieved that as well. And then if you look at the operating spend, OPEX spend discipline, we're on track to what we set at 35%. Our growth is within the range we set for ourselves between 25 to 30 percent. So there's a lot to be proud of. So you don't always think about this every day, but having an event like this to go through that uh, really, really, you realize, wow, you know, the team collectively, everyone's done a really, really good job. And that set out for us new targets moving forward. You know, we've upped our financial targets. We're going to continue with the beat rate of new products that we've talked about. And we're going to be creating, you know, we talked about a product called Avant, actually. That's going to take us not just we're going to uh, deliver products and solutions for the small portion of the FPGA market, but actually we're going to be going into the mid-range with our Avant platform, which is the next generation after uh, our Nexus platform, and that'll awesome. come in the second half of 22. So hold on there before you get to that, because that's uh, that's something I want to talk to you about. I don't want to I don't want that to be glossed over. Um, as a quick recap, though, you know, doing what you say sometimes is un is a little bit underrated in a company. Um, but it shouldn't be. And that's something I want to make very clear. As an analyst, I prognosticate a lot. Uh, when I get it right, I'm extremely uh, ready and willing and going to make time to, to tout my successful prognostications. Although a lot of times we're not as willing to go back and say, hey, I got that one wrong. And, you know, in this case, it was kind of nice to say everything we said we would do. And by the way, if you really look across the market and in semiconductor space, some of the companies that have been punished the most harshly in the past few years, it has not been because of poor performance. It's been because of failure to do what they said they would do. And so yeah. that is one of the things investors um, are looking for. And I would certainly say your customers as well want that dependability of saying, if Lattice says they're going to build this product, in a year, we can design around this. We can count on this. That's important. And I, and I just hope people out there really put some weight to this. And then next year, we hold you equally as accountable to come back with another 10 green check boxes. Okay, I know I don't get a ton of time with you here. So I wanna move on. You started teasing your new products. 
It wouldn't be a good financial uh, or an investor day if you didn't at least maybe make a few product drops or hints. You guys made several. Run me through some of the big announcements, new products, and, and where you see this in terms of Lattice's future. Yeah, so we did. We, we announced uh, quite a few products. We gave a, a roadmap of what's to come. If you look at our Nexus platform, that's really differentiated platform. We're bringing in products with four times lower power than competitive products. You know, uh, really good reliability to soft air rates, which is a known phenomenon issue with, with FPGA, but 100 times better performance there. And then we did a lot of stuff around AI and security and embedded vision. So we've announced, uh, we've introduced uh, three products from that thus far. And we've got the fourth product, which is our service product we talked about at the Investor Day, having a, a launch on that on June 23rd. So people can go to our website, sign up, and be part of that uh, launch event that we're going to have on June 23rd uh, this month. But we also talked about additional Nexus uh, devices coming out from the platform. Then we talked also that we're creating our new platform, which is the Avant platform. And this is where we're increasing the LUT capacity. You think of that as the size or how much logic an FPGA can hold. We're increasing that by quite a bit. And we're adding a lot more differentiation to go after the mid-range of the FPGA market. But it isn't just about the hardware. We also gave a roadmap around our solution stacks. And these are really important for our customers and the industry. Um, it allows our customers to uh, use our products easier by giving them the tools and the IPs and some of the software kernels that they would need that to embed in their systems themselves. And we've launched prior to this investor day, we had three, our Sense AI focused around AI applications, our embedded visions around, you know, sensor aggregation and how do you do uh, computer vision or M vision and also our Sentry solution stack around security. But at the day of the investor uh, day, we also announced our automate solution stack, which is really around uh, robotics and, and motor control, uh, things that happen in, in an industrial type application. And we also announced a roadmap where we're going to have an ORAN uh, solution stack coming out uh, first part of 2022 with another one coming out after that as well. So we're excited about what we're doing. The, uh, the beat rate and the cadence of new products, both on the software and hardware side, isn't slowing down and the uh, customer interaction and uh, intimacy has been really good. I mean, our customers helped us define these as well. And this is, you know. Yeah, I saw a lot of things. I mean, in the factory, I saw, you know, the incorporation of AI into the automate platform, uh, predictive maintenance. I think it was like more than a dozen, maybe 14 times lower power consumption, um, you know, with two times the capability in terms of uh, how many uh, controls, you're doubling the amount of voters that can concurrently uh, you know, deploy. So when you're hearing like industry 4.0, you're these are the this is the meat and potatoes of being able to to provide that level of control. And then you know, obviously, you mentioned the Nexus side. Um, you know, big increases in system bandwidth, um, increases or improvements. I'm sorry, not increases, improvements in power efficiency and, and a broader range of support yeah. for different apps. And you guys mapped this out um, across. And, and the other thing, by the way. Uh, you guys came, you know, as you, you kind of gave a sneak peek, and that was your 5G ORAM solution stack. Um, probably not something most people think about with FPGAs or Lattice, but you guys are getting and in squarely inserting yourself in the conversation uh, to play in the 5G space. So, I mean, a whole lot. And then, of course, you mentioned Avant, which was maybe the biggest um, and maybe the reason I want to just take an extra second to point to that one is I think you doubled your TAM, right? The Avant basically took you from about a $3 billion market opportunity to six um, with the inclusion of this. And this basically was, as you mentioned earlier um, in the conversation, uh, you, you are essentially going up market, not to the high end of the FBGA stack. I think you guys have recognized where the biggest opportunity and fastest market adoption is, but right above where you've been hanging in this lowest cost, low, can uh, power devices, there's a little bit of an upstream opportunity that you said, we're going to be there. Avant is going to be the solution for this along with your software, and it's going to double the TAM. Yeah, that's the unique, unique thing about us. You know, when you look at our, our traditional competitors, which is really the uh, Xilinx that builds FPGAs and Intel, they're really focused on the large FPGAs. These are the largest FPGAs for data center acceleration, communication, radio processing as examples. We're really in the area of innovating in products that aren't getting the, uh, the, the attention or the innovation from uh, the, the competitors. And by the way, that $6 billion uh, consists of two things. It consists of traditional FPGAs that we go after, 
But because we're adding more capabilities into our FPGAs today that didn't exist before, like AI, like security capabilities, or things that we're doing around computer vision or M vision, that opens up more SAM and more TAM for us as well. And what we're seeing, even with the Nexus, is we're displacing MCUs in a lot of applications as well. When you think about an AI application with an MCU or an FPGA, an FPGA is going to do it a lot more efficiently because it's parallel processing and at a lower power. And, and the same applies to motor controls. And you alluded to that. You know, we can control more motors you know, simultaneously with more precision in an FPGA because of the parallelism that can occur in an FPGA than an MCU. So we're actually not just competing and taking share and growing within what I call the traditional FPGA market, but we're actually identifying new applications for FPGAs that didn't exist before. Yeah, I mean, it's a true example of where automation uh, through technology and software, in this case an FPGA, can displace legacy, uh, you know, route to solution, yep. which would t typically be with an MCU. So I want to I want to take this home and talk a little bit about the future, the guidance. Um, you know, we are not a purely a financial, but I really like to live at that sort of intersection of financials, technology. I think the it's the ultimate truth of any company lives in the reporting and the numbers. Uh, your products are make for great market texture, but when you can sit in front of us and say this, like that's why I love to say do when you say this is what we said, this is what we did, um, because you know I wouldn't say marketing can lie, but let's just say marketing leaves a lot of room for interpretation. Numbers do not. Um, yeah. So you guys, I, I had some key takeaways. You're targeting significant growth. I believe you said you're going to target double digit. Um, you mentioned 62%, but you're actually targeting to push that up to 65%. Right. Um, you're trying to keep your OPEX stat, uh, you know, stable, um, and you're really pushing a profit target um, to go above 30%. So, you know, this was, you know, primarily comments that your CFO, uh, Sherry Luther, came up and gave. But, you know, you're, you, you increased your guidance. You set a whole list of new say dues going forward and things that we are going to hold you accountable uh, for. Um, talk about that. Talk about what's ahead. Yeah, and it's probably worth note that we did all the, we met our financial targets, you know, uh, what we said, and, and this was in a tough year of COVID and uh, trade wars as well. And we set, you know, what we felt were good targets for us to meet as well over the next three to four years, as you said, you know, continue sustainable double digit growth, starting off on the, on the low end of the double digit, and then with the Avant clearly accelerating that double digit even more. Uh, and the margins, as you said, we were upping our target from 62 to 65 percent and the operating income 30 plus. You know, what, what, what drives that are, are two, two key things. Number one is having the right products and, and, and roadmap of products coming out uh, that can address the applications of our customers. But also the fact that we're in a lot of growth drivers across different end markets. So when you think about 5G, you know, we're well proliferated across the top OEMs in 5G. As 5G continues to deploy, and we're still in the early stages of 5G, we benefit from that. You know, we, we showed uh, examples of how our attach rate is increasing from one generation to another in the server market. And the dollar per server is also increasing from generation to generation. That drives growth. We talked about the fact that we are now doing something that other FPGAs couldn't do, which is we're now in the client compute platforms. And we had two platforms that we talked about that launched in 2020. We're going to see the full benefit of that in 2021. But hey, those aren't the only two. We're engaged with, you know, the top OEMs on more client compute platforms that will drive more growth for us as well. Our industrial and automotive has been a good growth segment for us, even in a tough year last year. That grew 12% year over year. In fact, if you take our two largest growth segments that account for 85% of our revenue, the comms and compute and the industrial and automotive, those two that account for 85% of revenue today grew uh, double digits over the last three years combined. And so we've got some really good growth drivers for us with the products that we're bringing out. Uh, we're really excited about what the futures hold and hence the, the reason why we updated our target models. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you put it all together, the summation I took was, you know, the past was strong. And that was reflected in what you said. You met the results and you were very specific, uh, very prescriptive about how that happened. I was more op uh, optimistic, though, about the future. You know, anytime a company doubles its TAM and doesn't only do that arbitrarily, but through very specifically uh, entering a new market, which, by the way, 
fairly green field in nature, not overly crowded space that you're very well prepared to enter and, and, and become a meaningful player. Cause these aren't brand, this isn't a lot of going to brand new companies. This is taking your offers. This is net revenue expansion within yeah. your current portfolio. I mean, you're entering a few new spaces, but more than qualified, capable, and, and, and you are well known in those areas. So while Lattice may not have the same branding as some of the big home, you know, PC maker chips. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> in, the, in the spaces you serve, you are becoming more and more a household name. And that's because you've executed extremely well. And then, of course, like I said, the ambitious guidance that was underpinned by a path to results all had me feeling encouraged. Um, Sam, we only have a minute or so to wrap up here. Any other things you want the, uh, the community to know before I set you free? You know, I really appreciate this time. We're all in the company. Everyone just as excited as, as what, how you articulate as well. We've got a lot of good stuff ahead of us that we're all excited about. And being part of that and how we contribute to the industry as a whole and to society and what we're doing, uh, it's just exciting for everyone. And hey, and I do appreciate finally being on this podcast. I've been waiting for this day for quite a while. I really do appreciate it. Yeah, no, I was super excited to have you here. Um, you know, thank you so much for joining. It was a great presentation. I'm glad we were able to share a little more depth here with our community. Um, this is why I included the uh, Lattice Semiconductor uh, as the Lattice, Lattice Semiconductor as one of these semiconductor companies I really feel that everybody needs to be paying a little bit more attention to, or a lot more attention to. But definitely check out the show notes and the transcription of this. Um, please share this. Put the, put the, please share this and put the word out there for everybody to see. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of exciting things happening. I said this in uh, January 2020, semiconductors will eat the world. It is going to be general purpose. It is going to be ASICs, and it is going to be FPGA. For this episode of uh, the Future of Tech podcast and the Future of Tech TV, I got to say goodbye. Assam, thanks for joining. We're going to have you back soon. Thanks for bringing up the, the screen and upping my game. I can't wait for mine to arrive. And thanks again for the flowers. All right, everybody. Thank you Stay so much. Us. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.